This? You've probably heard of Venom, the shape-shifting hey, symbiote yeah, that requires a host to form a living you. union. You're lonely in it life. gives the host you feel superpowers sad a lot of the time. Basic. Life sucks, but you are loved, and you bring happiness to this others. This is that a Tyler Typer sniper. Stay strong. Feel it strong makes you insanely badass. We are Venom. However, this is an unequal union, as the symbiote influences the host in its own ways. But it's not only in the Marvel Universe that these host-requiring creatures exist. There are parasites somewhere on Earth at this very moment, walking and crawling around, controlling their host's lives. Ugh, what is this? Even though they're smaller than Venom, trust us, you wouldn't want to encounter any of them. Subscribe to our channel and press that bell button so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And let's go exploring the real life demonic parasites. Chat. That are Chat. What do we answer to that? Mm. Wait, what, what do you mean no? I thought it was going to be yes. Oh, okay. Guaranteed to make you feel itchy. That's disgusting. The tongue eating louse. If you're eating, you might want to pause because Cymothoa exigua, popularly known as the tongue eating louse, will help you lose your appetite quick. It's a parasite isopod that searches for fish to use as hosts. Once it finds one, it enters the body of the unlucky fish through its gills, climbs all the way up to the fish's mouth, and secures itself to the animal's tongue. It then proceeds to suck the blood out of the tongue until the tongue dies and falls off. The uninvited guest will finish by attaching itself to where the tongue used to be. What the While fuck? While this experience is unpleasant for the fish, it's not deadly. The fish lives on, and the parasite stays and feeds on the fish's blood and mucus. The good news for us is that these parasites don't go after human tongues, but they do go after the fish that people eat. So, bon appetit! That's like an disgusting dinner. Some of these host manipulating I mean, parasites are closer than you want them to be. This. It's even possible that they're around you at this very moment, since they're invisible to our eyes due to their size. This single-celled creature is called Toxoplasma gondii. Let's call it Toxo. Toxo is one of the most common parasites in developed countries. Its main targets are rats and mice. Once a toxo infects a rodent, it Rip messes Mitch. up the rodent's perception of reality by eliminating its natural fear of cats. Infected rodents start acting against their instinct and become idiotically brave while sniffing around felines, their potential predators. Naturally, this gets them eaten by cats. This is all part of the toxo's elaborate plan, as its main goal is to reach the guts of the cats, where they can reproduce. Apart from the rodents, that's looking vile, dude. That's disgusting. Creatures as well, such as humans. Ugh! It is estimated that almost half of the world's population and over 60 million Americans carry a toxo. But don't panic. Human symptoms are mild and vary from a headache to a sore throat. Therefore, they usually go unnoticed until they resolve on their own. But there's something else. Some scientists have noticed that there is a small connection between this parasite and schizophrenia, as Toxo is surprisingly common in people with schizophrenia. However, the link is still not scientifically established. The Zombie Ant Fungus This body snatcher doesn't move, but it does infiltrate, zombify, and kill. Me? You see this thing coming out of the ant's head? That's a cordycep. A gruesome species. No, that's fucking like disgusting. Is what it is. requires a particular type of ant, the bullet ant, in order to complete its life cycle. Ants create impressive traffic structures where they can quickly commute and perform their daily. That's gonna get kind of crazy. Think about it. They strictly follow the established path and rarely step outside of it, but sometimes they do. This is because while performing their daily routines, they can get infected by this malicious parasite from stepping on a miniature spore laying on the forest floor, which like infects a mine. the ant. It infiltrates the ant Yikes, and then starts developing its Yikes. body. In order to complete its growth, the fungus needs proper levels of humidity, which are usually found out of the ant's routes. The fungus infects the ant's mind and coerces it to leave the track and climb up a tree, where the conditions are better for the fungus. 
There, the zombie ant attaches itself to a leaf with its mandibles and dies by performing something that is known as the death grip. Finally, the fungal threads start emerging through the dead ant's head. Once it's done, it will release newly formed spores. The spores will then fall down to the forest floor, why? laying in wait for new victims. Naturally, it's not unusual that when a single ant gets infected, the whole colony will eventually get infected and die in this morbid way. So, once an infected ant starts showing worrying symptoms and bypassing ants' notice, they grab the infected insect and carry it away as far as possible. How are they so smart? It's the only way to save the entire colony. While it's just a fungus, it's even worse than venom. If you're an ant or the ant man. Green braided brood sac. Please no. Snails look like this. However, this is no, dude. This is not snail. But it used to be. Its body has been hijacked by a bomb. Holy shit! Parasite. There's no dude, there's no this is real dude. This parasite is a flatworm that begins its life in a bird's stomach. The worm's eggs are released to the world through the bird's digestive tract. Yeah, the bird poops the eggs out into the wild, where they get accidentally eaten by unsuspecting snails. Once the parasite is inside the poor snail, it starts to develop by expanding itself and filling the snail eye stalks, which results in a transformation that changes them from plain and simple to big, glittery, and mesmerizing. Fucking kill me, dude. This parasite has high ambitions, aiming for the sky. Literally. It transforms the snail's eye stalks into these protruding shapes in order to make them look like caterpillars, a delicacy for birds. To achieve their end game, they manipulate the snail's mind to make them go out into open areas so birds can easily find them and eat their eyes. How? The flatworm can then end up in the sky How? inside How? the bird's stomach. That's like mind control, dude. Produce and continue the life cycle. The jewel cockroach wasp. Even though this bug shines like a jewel. Yeah, how long is it? What the fuck? It, Do we see it at the end or not? It's truly a demon of the insect kingdom. Its victims? Cockroaches. Once this shiny insect crosses paths with a cockroach, the jewel wasp doesn't hesitate. It attacks its prey by delivering two stings right into the roach's head area. The first sting disables the roach's front legs, and the second is more precise, directed right into the roach's brain. This brutal attack doesn't kill the insect right away, but disables Could its escape instinct to make it disoriented and sluggish. In the chat Having ensured oh, that the roach too. will not escape, the wasp proceeds. It chews off the antennae of the poor guy and then leads it to its burrow simply by dragging it as the submissive, helpless cockroach silently opens. That's so sad, dude. Once in the burrow, the wasp reveals its plan. It's all for her young. It lays an egg on the roach's abdomen and barricades the entrance to the burrow with pebbles. It's not to keep the cockroach imprisoned, but it's to keep this private procedure sheltered from the outside world. The cockroach remains in the nest alive and helpless as the wasp's egg hatches on the roach's abdomen and the vicious baby starts feasting on the roach's internal organs. It's a slow process and starts while the cockroach okay, is still alive. I've had enough a of this month shit. Later, a healthy new adult wasp quietly emerges and starts looking for a new cockroach to continue the cycle, leaving what's left of the poor cockroach behind. The horse uh, hair worm. that's right fucking vile, the man. Wasp, the kamikaze horsehair worm is in no way shiny or pretty. Just like the shapeless venom symbiote, the horsehair worm is dark and wobbly. It can grow up to be one foot long. Dude, that's wild. Pickets, grasshoppers and praying mantises are what these insects are after. So just imagine what it would feel like to deal with a parasite 30 times bigger in length than you. It all begins when a cricket snatches a mosquito for its breakfast. Little did the cricket know that mosquito was carrying a horsehair worm larva, which in turn, the mosquito unwillingly ate earlier. This is how the larva the gets score. inside the cricket, you, Felix. and once Thanks it's in there, the macabre nature sense. begins. As the parasite develops, it hijacks the poor insect's mind by affecting its central nervous system. It manipulates the crickets to act against its instinct, 
Specifically, the parasite needs to get to the nearest body of water in order to reach the Another final stages control? of development. However, by nature, crickets avoid water at all costs because they can't swim. The worm forces the True helpless lull. cricket to jump straight into the water, where the poor fellow drowns. Yes, the parasite coerces the cricket to commit suicide. Once in the water, the worm emerges out of the cricket's body to, hands. to make it all even worse. Scientists once observed a case when 32, yes, 32 worms emerged from a single host. Remember this next time you think you're having a bad day. So yeah, Venom at least doesn't M -M -M force you to drown yourself yummy. and doesn't feast on your insides while you're still alive. 32? Let's stick with that for now. Which of the parasites deserve the biggest? Nope. If you like this video, nope. press the bell and... Nope.